So yeah, it's time to relate these to combinatorial properties of the graph G. So uh, let's get back to studying this thing that was called conductance, which is kind of uh, the conductance of a set was sort of the escape probability for that set in a random walk. And we were particularly interested in the sparsest cut problem, which was roughly speaking to like find the set of minimum conductance. This is sort of like the set that's sort of the worst bottleneck for the random walk in a graph. Um, and we observed that like the conductance of a set, I'll remind you of the definitions in a bit, but it was sort of like it was the ratio of this to this when f is the indicator of the set. Uh, or it's very close to that, uh, to some small twist. And um, so we were in, interested in the minimizer of that over all functions f, which are indicators of subsets. That's a specific kind of uh, function. But we also considered this problem where we didn't insist that the functions f were 0, 1 value. You could just minimize over all f. And let's take a look at that question. Suppose we are interested in minimizing oh, this quadratic form of f subject to the condition that the variance of f is 1. So this is closely related to this conductance business. And I claim, by comparing these two formulas, you can easily figure out what this minimum is. Can somebody say? That's right. Basically, which is the smallest uh, lambda? Well, it's maybe no longer up there. It's lambda. Yeah, maybe uh, I'll, I'll add this fact that was on a previous board. This was how we named our lambdas. But yeah, it's the smallest lambda other than the uh, lambda 0, which is always 0, which is, by our convention, lambda 1. So why is that? Well, OK, in this program, like I'm allowing you to choose any f you want, which basically means you can choose, you can think of choosing s values, or you can think of choosing f's coefficients in this basis. And I let you choose these coefficients to be anything you want. So basically, these coefficients can just be like any old real numbers you want. And that's equivalent to what you're minimizing over. So you have this constraint that the variance is 1. If you use this formula, that's saying, OK, the sum of the squares of f hat i, excluding the 0th f hat 0, is fixed to be 1. And what are you trying to do? You're trying to minimize this weighted combination of the, sum, the squares f hat i. And I guess it's more uh, clear if I make the observation that I can also put greater than 0 here. Because lambda 0 is 0. OK, so um, if you're the person trying to design a good f here, one thing you see is it doesn't even matter what you put for lambda 0, because it's not involved in the constraint, and it's not involved in the thing you're trying to optimize. That's also clear for another reason, right? Um, lambda 0, sorry, f hat 0 is the expectation of your function. It's the average value of the f's. We know that if you take a function f and um, add a certain constant to it, it neither changes the variance nor the quadratic form. So monkeying around with the expectation doesn't make a difference. So anyway, with that in mind, you're like, well, I may as well just play with the f hat 1 through f hat n minus 1. I fix the sum of squares to be 1, and I'm trying to make this as small as possible. Well, I should just put all my f hat i squareded on whichever is the smallest lambda, uh, which is lambda 1. So this is lambda 1, and it's achieved by phi 1. And it might possibly be achieved by a phi 2 if lambda 1 happens to equal lambda 2, but that's the situation. Uh, and I also want to remind you that this minimization is the same as this minimization. Minimize the ratio.
over all f. OK, because these quantities both have the property that if you multiply them by a constant, they go up by the square of that constant. Uh, OK, if you want to be picky, you should probably minimize over f's where the variance is not 0. Uh, so maybe variance of f is not 0, or f is not a constant function. Uh, great. So uh, this is kind of good. If you happen to be interested in this program of minimizing this subject to this or minimizing this ratio, it's, the answer is very easy. Answer, lambda 1, done. But what we're really interested in, as I'll remind you, in this sort of sparsest cut problem is this minimization problem but restricted to functions f uh, take on the value 0, 1. And that actually turns this into an NP-hard problem, which is a shame. But we'll see it's not so bad. The value of the minimum among 0, 1 functions is somewhat closely related to lambda 1, which is an easy to compute thing. So let me remind you from last time. Uh, if you have a subset S of vertices, its conductance uh, is this. Phi S is the probability uh, if you take a random edge that V is outside S given that U is in S. Or you can think of it as you pick a random vertex in S proportional to its degree, and take a random step and see if that takes you out of S. OK, so this is like the uh, sort of escape probability for S. And we saw maybe in more than one lecture, this is exactly given by this ratio. Uh, well, OK, almost given by this ratio. The numerator is, uh, to get this, is the quadratic form. The denominator, we just had volume of S. Uh, so we saw last time this quantity is exactly equal to this. Let me also mention that this volume is uh, the expected value of the indicator of S. Uh, and the sparsest cut problem is to determine the minimum conductance set. Uh, or, and let's say it's conductance. So I'll write phi g for the minimum over all sets s of this conductance. Now, as written here, this is slightly bogus. It doesn't quite make sense because, uh, as I mentioned last time, you know, this is trivially 0 because you can take s to be everything. Or you can also make it like undefined by taking s to be the empty set or something. So you should uh, the thing you should always really do, as I mentioned last time, if you have a set, you know, this is g, and you have some set of vertices s. Uh, the thing you really should put in the denominator here is either the volume of s or the volume of complement of s, whichever is smaller, because somehow it's they have the same edge boundary s and s complement. So let's uh, it's maybe more natural to normalized by the smaller of the two. So the way you normally see this written is, oh, it's among all s whose volume is not 0 and also at most a half. And you're like, well, otherwise replace it by its complement. Uh, but like, there's another, instead of doing this, you can do another slight trick that gives you a slightly different definition, which is going to be more convenient. Um, so. Instead, what you can look at is the minimization of this quantity, which this is the fraction of edges on the boundary of the set S, these edges here. In the denominator, you can put the volume of S times the volume of its complement. And you can basically minimize over all S here. Well, it should not be the empty set or everything. And what I'm saying is uh, these two quantities only differ by a factor of 2, at most 2. Uh, um, you know, one of these is always smaller than the other one, because you're always inserting here a number that's between 0 and 1 in the denominator. So that's only making the fraction go up. 
But on the other hand, uh, if you're always picking the s whose volume is less than or equal to a half, then the volume of the complement is between a half and one. So the number you're dividing by is between half and one. So it's only changing the ratio by a factor of two. Uh, if you didn't quite catch that, like, just take my word for it that these two problems are basically the same. And as I also mentioned last time, uh, we have no good algorithms at all for sparsest cuts. Even finding this, approximating this value up to a factor of 1,000, we don't know any efficient algorithm to do it. So like, right now, we're not interested in quibbling over factors of two. OK, so the reason I finally say all of this, it's a little bit of like a boring arithmetic aside, uh, is if we look at this denominator now, it's mu times 1 minus mu, where mu is this thing, the, the mean of the indicator, or the volume of s. And that's you know, mu minus mu squared, which is actually, I claim this is the variance of the indicator of s. Because okay, the variance of the indicator is the expected square of this function, which is the same as the expected of this function, because it's 0, 1 valued, which is mu, minus the square of the expectation. OK, so I scribbled a lot here, and maybe you didn't catch it all. But uh, what I'm finally trying to say is, this problem with sparsest cut, finding the set of vertices with the smallest escape probability, or the smallest uh, conductance, or like the worst bottleneck, seemingly, for random walks, is, uh, so this thing, this equality, is like now if I put the variance down here. What I'm saying is, it's exactly equal to, or maybe up to a factor of two, this program, but when you're only minimizing over zero, one functions. Okay, so let me uh, write that more clearly. So what I'm saying is this uh, combinatorial quantity, phi g, the size of the sparsest cut, or the, the escape probability of the least conducting set, it's basically up to a factor of 2, even by restricting this minimization problem to 0, 1 valued functions. So we're taking a minimization problem and saying, oh, I'm now ruling out some of your allowed possibilities. You can only choose a certain kind of f. So that means this minimization problem's value is going to be smaller than the minimization problem where you're restricted to only choose 0, 1 functions. So at long last, what I'm trying to say is, if you're interested in this, the sparsest cut value, a lower bound for it, up to a factor of 2, is this very easy to compute quantity, lambda 1. So that's great. If you have a graph G, you can easily compute using linear algebra its eigenvalues and eigenvectors of L. And so you can easily come up with this number lambda 1. And this gives you a nice lower bound for the conductance of the graph. If this lambda 1 turns out to be a, like a big number, remember these numbers are between 0 and 2. If it turns out to be like a big number, like 0.1, then you're like, oh, great. Phi g is uh, at least 0.05. So like if I, for every set in the graph, the probability of stepping out of that set in a random walk is like at least 0.05. So after constantly many steps, you feel like you have a good chance of getting out of it. Whereas, let's say you compute it and lambda 1 turns out to be 0 0.00000001, then maybe you're not sure what to think. You might worry that 5G is small, but actually this is so far only just a lower bound on it. Uh, but it turns out there's a pretty nice result called Cheeger's inequality. And it kind of gives the reverse inequality, but up to some mildly disappointing square root. So it says that uh, the conductance of the graph is at most a constant. I think the best constant is like root 2 or something, but just remember that it's some universal constant times square root of lambda 1. So in some sense, that actually qualitatively is nice. It tells you that if lambda 1 is really small, then phi g is also really small. Now, this small can get square rooted. So if lambda 1 is 0. 0.00001, then maybe phi g is like 0. 
uh, or whatever, the square root of that number. Um, but at least it tells you qualitatively this eigenvalue, lambda 1, the sort of second smallest eigenvalue of L, is like a reasonably good proxy for the minimum conductance in the graph. Now, I also said before there's no efficient algorithm for like coming up with a factor 1,000 approximation to this number, which is a little bit in tension with the fact that I'm also telling you that lambda 1 is sort of qualitatively a good approximation for this number. But it's just because like these numbers could be very, very small. So like the ratio between this and this uh, could be as like large as 1 over the square root of lambda 1 itself. But qualitatively, this is all right. And another um, nice aspect of it is this fact has kind of got a very simple constructive proof. What do I mean by that? Um, basically, you can effectively and efficiently turn phi 1, the real valued function that achieves lambda 1, into a 0, 1 function that achieves the associated conductance. Let me just write this. Indeed. Given uh, any non-constant f uh, achieving a good ratio of this quantity, let's say at most lambda. For example, you could take f to be phi 1 and lambda to be lambda 1. But actually, just given any real valued function f that achieves a pretty good ratio, there exists some S of this form. You can either take all the vertices where f of u is at least, let's say, theta, or all the vertices where f of u is at most theta. This is for some theta. Uh, with conductance at most basically the square root of this lambda. Okay, so what I'm saying is, let's say you find some real valued function that has a pretty good value for this ratio, and you're like, man, I really wish this was a 0, 1 function, because then I'd have a set that had small conductance. Well, you can uh, basically try all thresholds theta, and you say all the places, all the vertices where f's value is bigger than theta, I'll put them in the set. All the places where it's less than theta, I'll put them out of the set. And there will be some value of theta for which that's a great strategy in the sense that you'll get a set whose conductance is you know, bounded by the root of lambda. Uh, 